Now that you've got Coherence downloaded, it's time to get started. In this video, we'll see how to set up some Coherence parameters and start a cluster from the console. We'll also look at Coherence start log. Before getting started, you should have downloaded and extracted Oracle Coherence to your workspace. You'll need at least version 3.7.1. OK, let's start. I'm using Windows 7 as the operating system, Coherence 3.7.1, and JRocket 1.6.37 64-bit as the Java development kit. You don't have to use JRocket, you can use any standard JVM. You could also use Oracle VirtualBox to set up an Oracle Enterprise Linux virtual machine on your usual Windows machine. If you want to experiment with Coherence installations, you could try some pre-built virtual machines for enterprise Java development, downloaded from the Oracle VirtualBox main page. Now that we've downloaded and extracted Oracle Coherence, you'll be able to see some Coherence batch files under the bin folder. To start a Coherence server, we can use the cache server script file. Before running it, let's look over some parameters. We can set many JVM and Coherence parameters here. We'll just change the heap size parameter to 2 gigabytes. We'll save it. After that, we'll start the coherence cluster. In order to start the cluster, we must have two critical configuration files. One of them is the operational configuration file, which specifies cluster properties such as cluster name, cluster port, and TTL value. This file is called tangosol coherence override.xml. And the other one is the coherence cache config xml file which provide the features of the cache, not the cluster. Cache properties include specifying the cache type, distributed, replicated or near cache type. You can also set the cache size value, for example 1 GB cache size or 1 million cache entries. This also allows us to set the cache eviction policy, that is, looking out for least recently used or other parameters. If you don't specify these parameters explicitly, Oracle Coherence uses the default XML files from the coherence.jar file. In this example, I'm not covering these files in detail. We'll discuss them in detail later in the operational and cache configuration files section. Anyway, as you can see in the last line, we've started to cache server successfully. Let's have a look at Coherence's log. You can see the TCMP is bound to the machine's IP. This is because we did not explicitly set the cluster name. Coherence uses the default cluster name, that is, cluster. You can see a lot of information in this line. The JVM process ID and role of this server is coherence server. You can also specify another role name in some configuration files. We are using grid addition as it is the most powerful one. The CPU and socket count of this machine is 4. The master member set displays all the membership information of the cluster, including the current server. This member clause gives information about the current server, ID, and other information. The oldest member clause contains information about the first server that joined the cluster, ahead of all other members, while the actual member set gives information about all the members. Recycle millis keep track of when a member doesn't respond to a request for more than 120,000 milliseconds. Such a member becomes a recycled node. Recycle set specifies the members that were recycled. The services section specifies which services should be started. It is configured in the coherence cache config XML file within the coherence jar file because if we did not specify any XML file, coherence uses the default one. We then come to the standard default cache server clause where we have a cluster with one member. If I add a new member to the cluster, they'll communicate with each other. To test it, Start the cache server script in another console terminal. If we look at the master member set section on the new members log, you'll see the difference from our previous one. The ID value of this member set is 2, and in the actual member set section, we see two different numbers. If we look at the log of the first member after the new member joins the cluster, we see the first member recognises the new member. If I shut down a member, the other member recognises this and according to the chosen cache type, coherence will do whatever needs to be done. In this video, we've learned how to start a cluster and how to look at the coherence log. You'll be able to start the cluster and understand what's going on there by looking at the output logs. In the next video, we're going to learn how to access the data grid from the console.